this is Trevor Sternad from the Black Dahlia Murder here, and you're listening to the Ever Black Podcast. Hey, human scum, this is odorous from Guam. I'm going to the Fear Factory. This is George Corps, Commander Fisher. This is Jasmine Delegate. This is Wade from Our Last Enemy. This is Mike Smith from Cool Battle Tennessee. He is at Wednesday 13. This is Bruce Lennon. This is Rex from Kill Devil Hill. This is Gary Lee from Simple Tour, and you're listening to Ever Black Podcast. Before we go into this episode of the Ever Black Podcast, we just need to give a shout out to our show supporters, the occult clothing brand Electric Witch. We have amazing apparel from shirts to hoodies to hats to beanies, dresses and more. Check out their full range at electricwitch.com.au and put in the code EVERBLACK for 20% off your order. Also, don't forget to subscribe, rate and review the Ever Black Podcast on Spotify and iTunes podcast streams and see all our video interviews on the Ever Black YouTube channel. You can also read all our articles and reviews at everblack.com.au. All right, on with the show. Well, Armit, thanks for joining us on the show, brother. Uh, how's everything going over there where you are in the world right now? Are you staying safe? Everything okay? Yeah, um, you know, we're we're doing all that we can to make sure that our friends and family and the community um, is, is safe. We, we're not COVID idiots. We get tested. We wear masks like civilized individuals. And, um, you know, better better to be safe than sorry, as I like to say. That's right, man. That's right. Well, that's good to hear you're doing all right, man, because uh, I just watched this Alex Winter film, Zappa, which I think is incredibly well made. And, and there's a lot of heart and care that went into it. And to my understanding, you, you and the family have been very protective of um, sure, yeah. things, which is totally understandable. But what was it about Alex that he came in with this and uh, that allowed you allowed him to do it? Well, um, as I'm looking at you via Zoom, I think the, the reason why Alex got the job is because you have Orko and Hordak and Skeletor, <laughs> uh, you know, on, on your top shelf. Yeah. And then uh, it looks like you have some, is that a Ghost Rider or maybe some of the Thundercats down there? Well, you know? no Thundercats, but I do have, uh, man, this whole room is filled with all kinds of weird and wonderful shit. I mean, um, the fact that you have Evil Dead, I mean, I got to work with Bruce Campbell once. That was pretty great. You know, I feel like we're like, could be really good friends. Um, and certainly in the things that we like, you know, separately. But one of my highlights was writing a cartoon for Bruce Campbell. Uh, uh, and I got him to do it. It was Bench Presley, the world's strongest Elvis impersonating private eye. And Bruce Campbell was Bench Presley. Game over. Mic drop. You yeah, just blew I, my mind, brother. I mean, <laughs> if you could look up here, I've got a total Bruce Shrine going on up here. As it's everyone should. So you're doing the right thing, especially during these COVID times. I know. Yes. No, I love yeah. that, man. But uh, yeah, but, it's all about the... <laughs> I'm glad you pointed that out. There's, yeah, my wife. Well, but, but in all seriousness, we're talking <laughs> about the Zappa duck. Yes. So, um, you know, the, the journey to, to make the film has been fraught with terror. You know, it, there's been so many ups and downs, uh, you know, starts and stops. And and uh, I can't believe that it's finally coming out and that people can appreciate it. And, you know, it really comes down to the the integrity of the filmmaker. Alex Winter is, you know, really, you know, we all know how funny he is. He's a great actor. Yeah. And maybe most people don't know the, the kinds of films that he makes or what his passions are and his real interests. Um, but I've been fortunate enough to, to, I got to know him in my, as a teenager, um, personally, and I got to see the movies that he's made over the years. And, and my mother had the opportunity to see a bunch of his films as well. Um, and you know, Alex called me up one day and said, how come there hasn't been a definitive doc? And I was like, well, there's many reasons. Uh, it's not that people haven't asked. I've been in plenty of meetings where they've gone South. Uh, and you know, I, I can tell you cautiously that, you know, why don't we go up and spend some time with my mother, um, who ran the day to day of the, of, you know, she was Frank's partner, uh, you know, my dad's partner. So, yeah. you know, in all the business and, and we, you know, went up to the house and spent some time together and, and I just watched for, um, watched it Gail, uh, and Alex started to, have a mind meld, you know, they became fast friends and, and she believed in him and, and put a lot of faith in him. And I think it was, it was kind of like the, the exciting choice to, 
to say like, look, you know, Alex, we believe in your vision. Um, and it's a big leap of faith on our end because, you know, we wanted to be able to champion him as much as he wanted to tell a story about an artist that he appreciates. We wanted to be able to feel confident and stand behind him as an artist, as a director to make the movie that he wanted to make. So that means warts and all just, you know, we're like, just whatever you do, tell a truthful story. Uh, and, you know, he had, he had director's cut. So, you know, we had, uh, you know, it, it was his point of view for, to, for, for the film. And I have to say, I love the choices that he made. Um, and, and Gail did something extraordinary. She gave him unfettered access to all the media in the vault and she, unfortunately, she passed before she had a chance to see it. I know she'd be proud of the film. I'm so proud of the film. I, the, I, you know, we discovered that a lot of the media was just rotting. And, and so you have this vault filled with all this awesome stuff. And then you were like, wait, it could all just melt away. And magically, the fan base, um, you know, Alex did a Kickstarter campaign yep. to help preserve the media. And, and people showed up. So it's in this bittersweet journey of really missing my mother and my father. The sweet side is I get to see all this uh, footage I've never seen before or got to see all this footage I'd never seen before and hear them laughing and, and, and seeing so much joy in their lives, but also just the sense of community of people rallying behind Frank. That's a really joyous feeling too. So I'm in total appreciation mode. I'm so happy that people get to see the film. I hope they like it. Um, oh, I loved uh, it. Oh, I'm glad. I, I absolutely loved it. I, I, yeah, I've watched it twice actually, and it's I, I love that because you, you couldn't before. understand it the first time. I understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, because I, I I I really really liked it a lot, and I liked that all, all the bits with the vault, like and, yeah. and and just not so much Frank the the musician, but also Frank as a father. Like I found that stuff like incredible as a dad myself, I yeah. found that incredibly moving and, and it's, it's a beautiful story, mate. It is. It's kind of um, hard to articulate. Uh, it's such a mixed bag of emotions for me. Cause I've seen the film so many times and I really do uh, certain, you know, concepts jump out at me at, in different moments, you know, by, by watching it so, so often. Um, and, you know, I, I think if I had any hope of what would, you know, transpire when all was said and done is that people would experience the movie and, and hopefully, um, you know, cause I think Frank is such a great example of an artist who just stood by his, uh, his art, you know, and, and yep. stuck to his guns and, and, and just was endlessly creating and i and i hope that that's inspiring to other people to be authentically themselves and and also stay true to their own art and you know a lot of the stuff that frank was fighting against in his lifetime kind of seems a little pedestrian now you know and, and i think that in many ways you know i'm biased but i think a lot of people are standing on his shoulders because he fought these fought the, these fights and you know, and change things for, yeah. for the good of many, I, I believe. Absolutely. He paved the way for so many people and, you know, especially, I mean, a, a lot of young kids these days are, are going to see that movie and, and I think they're going to be so inspired, but in saying that, I mean, musically his, his work is incredibly intimidating because it's so huge. As you said, he was like, just always creating. Yeah. Well, where would you, if, if you were to give a kid these days a bit of Frank here, what would that, where would that journey begin? Because it's so intimidating. What would you sit down and say, here you go? I, I mean, I was born in 74. So I, I kind of like the seventies the and eighties, early eighties stuff. Yeah. That's yeah. just what I heard all the time. So I, I'm, I love that stuff. So I always kind of start there. Um, uh, cause a lot, a lot of Frank's music can really be, it's challenging. It's really hard music to play, even though they make it feel really effortless. There's really complex, tricky things there. So I, I, I mean, my go-to records for, for someone who's going to dip their toe 
into the Frank Zappa waters would be a, a apostrophe overnight sensation, hot rats, um, you know, shake your booty. And then, you know, there's so many things to appreciate and laugh at on those records. Joe's garage is really great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you, you know, there's, he just has a, he's so many genres of music that he's playing in all of these records. It's, it's just so hard to categorize and I don't want to categorize it. I mean, yeah, I love the right. fact that it's uncategorizable, you know, that's a beautiful in many ways. Oh, absolutely. And uh, you know, there's a bit in the movie where Steve Vai is talking about how Frank was a, a slave to his inner ear and how yeah. he would try and manifest that, you know, what he heard in his head. Um, but ov obviously limitations of technology or whatever. Do, do you think, today he would have ex experimented more with like sampling and things like that. Where do you think he would have taken his musical direction these days? Um, I mean, he did experiment with sampling in a unique way. You know, yeah. he made this record called um, uh, Porn Wars, which where he sampled a lot of audio from some of the Senate hearings that, you know, of the people that he was fighting against and, and, you know, some of these, I guess, people he might have thought were total hypocrites or um, uh, I mean, you'd have to kind of listen to the music. So he was he was always experimenting with sound. And yeah. as an editor, I think that that's um, would have been kind of like through that kind of point of view of how he was making music. But but when I hear you say, like, what would he what would he do be doing with sampling? I think that there's magical things that would have happened in that you have access to um sound libraries were at, because he was a composer yes that he could totally mutate you know there's so many uh, like uh, like to buy a music library when when frank started playing and working with the synclavier cost you know you it's what you send someone to college for just to buy a gig <laughs> yeah, of, of, of on a hard drive space i mean it was ridiculous you know so i think that um the democratization of the of the access to instruments and and people's abilities to you know just the different DAWs and the way that you can record music and tweak music, um, he would have really been a force to reckon with because yeah. you know he did extraordinary things before there ever was Pro Tools. This was a guy who was taking a razor blade and physically cutting the tape <laughs> to make unbelievable edits. You know, this is someone who. It's like, oh, I remember the room tone of the sh a show I played in Greece, you know, and, uh, you know, the, the tempo of a show I did in San Diego would probably match up with that. And, oh, it's, you know, I like the horn section from a totally different band, you know, from 10 years later. I'm like, I bet that would that would like overlay on this, you know, and and he just remembered all of that. And it was perfect. And he put it all together. This is before you could quantize anything. So it's just ridiculous what he was able to do. It's insane. It is. It really is considering, you know, all by And this him. is before, like, he's like working with like a four track, an eight track, a 12 track, you know, a 16 track. I mean, he was always using whatever was cutting edge technology. And so he, I feel like it would be no different in this, in this case, he probably would have experimented with any way that you could record music and make music. Um, and because he was always recording conversations you know he'd be he would you know he already made a sound library when people weren't doing that privately you know so we have all of these crazy sounds that he made out of dust that are <laughs> fascinating to hear that he ex experimented with on 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 albums like jazz from hell and and you know a ton of stuff that hasn't been released yet you know Oh man, you said released yet. Is there more in the vault? I mean, that vault is huge from what I could see. In my lifetime, uh, you know, my kids' kids could keep putting out records. It's crazy. That's awesome. That is yeah. so good. Mate, it's so exciting. And I mean, you you probably hear a lot of Frank stuff in other artists as well. I mean, I, I hear that through like uh, bands like Primus and Devin Townsend and Mr. Bungle and heaps of bands like that, that, you know, whether they're conscious of it or not, it's it's oh. totally there <laughs> it's totally there uh you know I, I mean all three of those bands i know that they they are definitely people who appreciate um frank's music 
Uh, and I mean, Mr. Bungle, so awesome. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, you know who, Mike? If you're listening, hello. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, 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 I just don't like to categorize. You know, like uncategorizable music, like my like my dad in that way. It's weird. I, I'm so close to it. Yeah. I can easily package other people and like, oh, that sounds just like this or that because so many records just sound the same anyway. So, so I, I guess, you know, I, I guess I'm being a hypocrite in that, you know, I will totally judge and and you know and you know make statements like yeah like you know i just i don't like labeling things you yeah know, that's just yeah. part of the in my in my dna but i i still do it i guess sorry sorry frank <laughs> but yeah. you know what you're also a brilliant all-round talented artist as well it seems that you know those creative gifts have been passed on to you and your siblings through dna or but man it's is that something that you felt come, came naturally or was it part of the environment of growing up? Um, you know, if you, if you think I have some form of talent, thank you. Uh, I mean, I, not to be self-deprecating, but you know, I've always just pursued my interests and I, I think I learned that from, from watching my father, um, just go head first into the things that he was passionate about. And if that was music or politics or, or, you know, writing, um, you know, drawing, you know, just making art in, in general. So uh, I, I, I'm proud to say that I've never had a quote unquote real job. Every single job I've ever had has been somehow in the entertainment industry for the most part, or been, a, uh, been a creative uh, kind of uh, way to make a living. So that's been pretty great. You know, I, I'm, I, I think that I was able to do that because I was supported by my parents in and encouraged to follow that sort of lifestyle. Um, so, you know, on the flip side is it's, I, you know, I dropped out of school at the beginning of eighth grade, more than missed a ha half a year of school each year prior to that. And my parents' point of view was like, well, school is ruining your creativity. I feel like I'm a super creative person. And, you know, people hire me to, you know, for my point of view on, on the kind of art and things I want to, I want to do, um, or they buy the stuff I come up with. And I, and I'm, I'm proud of that, but I mean, my, my, my father is the master at, at um, you know, uh, of, of being someone who was not ever trying to necessarily do a commercial enterprise. He was just following the, the, whatever he wanted to explore. I, I'm, I'm a little more uh, corporate <laughs> to be honest. I'm like, I, I really enjoy working with the Disney's and the Nickelodeon's, you know, I, I love comics and, uh, you know, and, and that whole ecosystem, you know, so I, I, you know, I was at least pushed in that direction, you know, Hey, if that makes you happy, they were like, follow it. That's awesome. But you know what? On the flip side of that, you are an absolute beast of a front man. I've seen all these videos, that you, dude, like, I know what it's like. You get up there and it's like, you're possessed. You just feel you know, you don't make those, you know, I'm going to go over here. You just feel it. And just watching you and just how that sound flows through you is incredible. Like, man, I, awesome. I've, I, well, I appreciate that. And I think I had a, a pretty cathartic experience uh, recently or in the last couple of years, because I put together this show around my dad's music uh, called the bizarre world of Frank Zappa. And uh, I, I directed this, this multimedia music experience. And it was a bunch of band members uh, that, you know, people that played with Frank. And, uh, you know, I was able to kind of do this insane thing where I had Frank holographically projected in certain moments where you're just like, holy bananas. Uh, and Frank is, it comes out magically and just shreds your face off with his guitar playing. Uh, and it was, it was really fun. And, and, you know, for the people that, 
you know, I would, I would try to explain to them, like, look, if I use the word hologram, which I hate because it bleeds a weird taste in someone's mouth, I'm like, believe me, I'm trying to do something very, very fucking strange. It's in the title. It's called The Bizarre World of Frank Zappa. And we do some really bizarre things. Um, and so putting that show together as a father and being out on the road and even performing in that show and losing track of, of um, I don't want to say losing track of time, but being so busy and feeling honestly disconnected from my family and from my wife, um, I, it was this bizarre experience where I thought back to, you know, being a kid and when the phone would ring, hoping that it was Frank and hoping they could have a conversation like, where are you? And, and those moments were, were always like so short. And so here I am, you know, kind of doing the same thing to my own kids that were the same age that I was hanging on every phone call, you know, when my dad would, you know, call and check in with, with, you know, my mother and we had a chance to see how he was doing. That was really emotional. And um, I, I was like, wow, uh, I, what a blessing with FaceTime. I mean, you know, I, I don't know how Frank did it, you know, cause I know how much he loved being a dad. And when he was, you know, around, he just, you know, it's just too much time on the road that just kind of disconnect. It was, it was bittersweet, you know, but, but really great and rewarding in the sense for me that I was like, yeah, I can't. I can't do this. My, my, I just can't live that kind of a lifestyle. I want to, I want my kids around me, you know, I'll, if I could duct tape them to my body, <laughs> I, I, I would, I would, that would be fine with me. You know, are they, I don't, I don't know how old your kids are. My, mine are, I've got one grown up and a couple of younger ones, but have they started showing interest in music and stuff as well and art? Oh, I'm sure oh, yeah. that would be totally. My, my oldest is 10 which is a trip. She's her, her name's halo and she's totally awesome. Uh, music is a huge part of her life because she's very physical. So she's, she is, uh, you know, this extraordinary dancer tr truly. I think that if she wants to take that very, I mean, she takes it very seriously. Now she's totally self-possessed since, since she was a kid. Uh, I mean, she's still a kid, but since she was a baby, always moving like non-stop moving and she's totally she's got this incredible grace uh so she's got a deep connection to to music not so much you know playing it although i have i've captured her uh i hear her singing and she's got this angelic sweet little voice um so i think she could you know she could she could probably play she plays piano she enjoys that but you know she's more into the dancing side but my son, Arrow, um, is like, there's, there is something, there is something happening musically with that guy, That's like exciting. where you're like, wait a second, this is, this is, this is crazy. He, he came out conducting <laughs> and, and playing the drums and interpreting music, anticipating rhythm and has that this unbelievable feel just from how he moves uh and and is singing all the time and and now he's between the drums and air guitar uh i just kind of watch him like who are you you know what are you <laughs> yeah so he's you know a, he's a to be continued i think that he probably you know we, we never know but they're they're both very artistic that's awesome you know, as a dad, I know what how excited it is to watch. You know, your kids pass on that. You know, well, creativity. I mean, I, I, I like he kind of likes what I like. It's, it's he. I know that he can. I know he's a musician. I, I, I feel like he'll probably be able to pick up any kind of instrument pretty effortlessly. He seems to exhibit that um, skill set, but he likes rock. Yeah, which is man, awesome. So you know, you can play something. He's like no it just just doesn't feel right smell right it's just not you know but you you start to play him like a crunchy metal groove and his whole world changes it's radical he loves metal which is my 
favorite thing of all time because I love Kiss and Dio and you know Iron Maiden and I mean I love my dad's music but I'm I'm super super into my 80s you know hair metal all day <laughs> so is my son it's great I love it I love it man um I don't know how much time we got left I think we might have gone over it but uh mate uh it's been an absolute pleasure hanging out with you and talking about this film and frank and of course you know everything that's going on in your world what have you got coming up next what's what's on your plate uh let's see working on a musical right now which i'm pretty excited about um so hopefully that'll see the light of day in 2021 um i have a pretty funny um comedy that hopefully will be i'll be making this year but uh, I've just been spending a lot of time working in animation. Uh, it's certainly in COVID because you know it's mm. people, artists can work and voice actors can work, and um, so that's just some of the stuff in my like the the personal things that are non Zappa related, I suppose. Uh, doing a lot of that, and then you you know there should be some crazy announcements coming up in the, in the world of music uh, if all goes the way I'm thinking, you know. So uh, there's a lot, there's some exciting things that I'm looking forward to, to doing, uh, you know, in, in 2021. Oh man. Well, uh, I'll be uh, following what you're doing. That's for sure. Well, brother. well good. Hail Satan, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And more Bruce kid. Campbell. More Bruce Campbell, right? Uh -huh. Any day of the week, Bruce is welcome as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I do talk with him with regularity. He's, I think he should have, won an asker an asker an asker and an oscar for army of darkness oh. you know some of the some of the best acting and and you know shotgun work i've ever seen in a film oh mate just i love that dude he's my hero yeah there you for go. sure oh yeah. man well it's great to chat and i hope people yeah. you know and enjoy zappa and and stay s safe healthy and and uh you know just you, we can all have differences of opinions and that's cool. Uh, we can agree to disagree, but stop the hate and stop doing stupid shit to other people just because they have a different point of view than you. That's lame. That's that I'm with you there. Thanks so much, brother. We'll have all the links down here for the film. It's out this week and uh, take care, man. And we'll see you in Australia down for uh, one of those martinis one day. Oh, I'd love that. That's, that's a, <laughs> that's a deal. See you soon. See you, bro. Mm -hmm.